in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Daniel chapter 10 verse 10 and behold an hand touched me and set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me O Daniel a man greatly beloved understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee I am now sent and when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not. Daniel had been fasting and praying. He said, For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come to thee for thy words. Verse 13. But the prince, listen. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. And lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Listen, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then it says, against principalities, against powers. Then against rulers. Then against spiritual wickedness. They do not operate in the earth realm. The Bible says they operate in the heavenlies. This prince of Persia was the territorial spirit across the land of Persia. So when Gabriel was bringing the answer, the solution, that prince stopped him. I have been put in charge of this territory to make sure that breakthrough does not come to men to make sure that men are not lifted but there was a man in the earth realm who kept praying and while he prayed it was on the strength of his authorization the from the arsenals of heaven the archangel michael had to come because he's the archangel in charge of war we are going to pray tonight every land has territories are you hearing what i'm saying every land has territories and there are spirits those of you who have listened to the message give me this mountain there is a spiritual dimension to life and there are met there are certain things that will never manifest in your life until you prevail in prayer jacob held on to him he said i will not let you go he said leave me for the day break it he said no way he said what is thy name he said jacob he said your name will be changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. And you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't let anybody fool you. And tell you what we just read. Was the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when you pray, it just comes. It, 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 it makes... Listen. The kingdom of God is a system. The earth realm is a system. Are you getting my point? It is as soon as Zion travails hallelujah that she will put forth there is a birthing this is the ninth month if you didn't come to pray tonight i'm so happy about the rain because you won't go anywhere we are going to pray hallelujah are you ready to pray now we are going to pray listen we are going to confront powers zechariah chapter 1 please quickly zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 then I lifted up my eyes and I saw 
and I beheld what? Four horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. Next verse. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? What are these horns? And he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. These are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. These are the horns that are making your father to never reconcile with your mother. These are the horns that make finances to stop when it's about to come. These are the horns hindering the gates of marriage. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then I said, what come this to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. These are the horns that have robbed you of your testimony, of your joy. He said, so that no man does what? Lift up his head. They have put a barrier around your family and your life. And they have said, no man will lift up his head. So every time you want to lift up your head, there are horns. They station them. Hear me and take seriously what I'm saying. They have drawn the boundaries. Man takata. Goodness. I tell you, I sense deliverance fire in this place tonight. Oh, those horns must leave. For sure. There are horns stationed across territories. To make sure that men do not rise. Some of you, this is a limitation. You are the first person in your family to get to the university. There are horns. But tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to step out and put on our priestly regalia. We are going to confront the heavens. He told Job, he said, Has thou commanded thy morning? Did you speak into the heavenly territories? Did you command the things to align themselves? We are praying tonight. The Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. She was a warrior and the constellations arranged themselves to make sure that enchantments could not go to the heavens. Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on now. You have to be more serious than this. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. That every power across my territory that wants to stop me and stop my family from rising up, I challenge you tonight. By the blood of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We we place a demand on the heavenly host. We place a demand on the ministry of angels. We place a demand. Ipa kata ba biya ke 
Hallelujah. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, we are praying tonight. Jude 1. Jude 1, verse 9. You will see tonight that Satan is interested in this body that you wear. Jude 1. Everyone read. Want to read. Hold on. Do you see Michael again? Michael in Daniel contending against powers. He shows up again in the book of Jude. Read on. Want to read. Hold on. He disputed about the what? Spirit, soul, body. Satan wanted the body of a man. Satan wants the bodies of men. Not just their spirits. Because without a body, without a body, demonic activities cannot be carried out. The church is called the body that the Holy Ghost uses. It's called the body of Christ. The body that the Holy Ghost wears. There is a law in this realm. That any spirit that does not have a body. Cannot function in this realm. So Satan wants the body of Moses. If he looked for the body of Moses. Moses in the Old Testament. How much more your own body. So he will afflict you. He wants your body. So he will manipulate your body and all kinds of objects moving around. But the Bible says, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not. Listen, we are going to pray. I'm establishing a prayer point. Jesus entered the temple, which was his body. And he found out that there were strangers in that temple. Are you getting my point now? Those who should be in the temple were not there. And he found people doing business in the temple. There were transactions going on in his body. That's the same way Satan carries out all kinds of transactions. In human bodies. And you hear people complaining. Objects are moving in my body. You see people sleep in the night. And all kinds of devilish things come to oppress them. Tonight we are going to pray. Are you getting my point? Please, if you are sitting, except you are under the anointing, stand up. And let's take some time to pray. You must get angry tonight and let's pray. Because something must break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. That my body. That is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body, my body belongs to Jesus. Therefore, every strange spirit attempting to hold on to my body, I command you right now, depart from my body now. Lift your voice and pray. Every stranger, Every stranger, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Pray. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Everywhere the gospel was preached, Jesus demonstrated that he was not only interested in the spirits of men, but their bodies. What healing does to your body is what salvation does to your spirit man. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the root of sickness. I want you to get ready because the devil is in trouble. There's fire burning in this place this night. No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake in the name of madness. Are you getting what I'm saying? No matter how stupid a man is, in his insanity, he knows fire when he sees it. The Bible says he maketh his ministers wings. Are you getting my point? And his messengers flames, flames of fire. Every stranger in your body is about to leave. I don't care what it is called. Sickness is that. Let me tell you how you know that these things are demonic. Because many of us, when you pray on it, it will go. And then later on it will return. You are a lady, they pray for you. And then for one or two or three months, you find out that your period just comes normally. No pain, no nothing. And then in the fourth month, it backfires again. There are people, recurrent headache, all kinds of devils. A growth comes and then it goes. You pray and try to treat it, it goes. We are going to set it on fire right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, know ye not that your body. I showed you from the book of Jude. Satan was fighting with Michael over the body of Moses. Hallelujah. This body is your legal access for living and functioning in this realm. If it is battered beyond repair, your spirit will no longer be able to stay there and it will have to leave. So if Satan cannot get to manipulate your mind, he will batter your body in a way that your spirit cannot live and it will have to go. We are going to pray. Many of us, as you are praying right now, you will be surprised. Huh? Now is the time to pray all those. Hold on, please, one minute. Genotype. Huh? I've read my Bible from Genesis. Please listen. This is very serious what I'm sharing. There's no mention of any nonsense of genotype in this Bible. Have you read your Bible? There are many ladies right now, many guys, they cannot even get married. They can't think of anything because the devil put one rubbish embargo called genotype. S, S, A, S and all of those rubbish. Now you want to get married or you want to settle down, they tell you no. Health wise, every parent is carrying their child and running away. The devil is in trouble tonight. We are going to pray. If he was not here, he should not be in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying. Whatever has affected this body has affected God's property. And we're going to pray and invoke his presence that he will rise in his jealousy and attack any stranger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you, as you pray, growth will disappear. See, the trouble is that many of us have been praying, but we, we of course, I know not here, but generally, we, we do not know the power of the corporate anointing. Psalm 133 talks of God depositing the blessing where people are gathered together in unity. That's different from your personal prayer life. Are you getting my point now? We are going to pray. There are traits of infirmities around your family. There are traits of infirmity in your life. There are many of us, all sorts of embarrassing conditions. Skin problems. To the minutest, to anything. Hear me. No matter how small it is. 
it is according to your faith tonight. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, whatever my father has not planted, whatever he has not planted, it must be uprooted. Don't sit down and tolerate it. What you tolerate in your body, the devil will use it to destroy you. But when you resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee. Lift up your voice. We are going to pray again. Say after me in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness. Every infirmity. Every abnormality. In my body. Hear the word of the Lord. I command you. To leave this body now. I command you. To leave this body now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every stranger Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Joel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 23. Joel 2, verse 23. Want to read? Verse 24. Verse 25. Shout it with all your heart. Shout it. Listen, listen, listen. We are still praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Based on the word of God. I place demand. For restoration. In my life. In my family. Hallelujah. We are going to pray that prayer again. You know the areas you want restoration. Please we are not playing games tonight. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah. 
when we get to that party we'll mention it and we're going to pray the bible says i will it didn't say i will send someone i will supervise your restoration hallelujah the years we're going to say lord turn the hands of time again turn the hands of time let that which the devil has stolen be restored there are things that need to be restored tonight hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus, the name of jesus. I, receive I receive sevenfold restoration, sevenfold restoration. of everything the devil has stolen in my life now mention them your health whatever it is lift your voice and Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him thanks. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because our eyes will see the desires of our hearts and our hands will handle it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Just give me 10, 15 minutes and we're out of here. If this is all we have done tonight. It is worth it. There's no place for you to sit, stand, sit on the floor, sit anywhere. Go ahead. The service is already on. So, Please, there should be no vacant seat. There are still people standing. The person is under the anointing. Let the person lie down on the floor and let someone use the seat. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what the word of God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. It's not even knowing that there is a kingdom principle. That's not revelation. Revelation is knowing how to make that principle work in your life. If it cannot work in your life, then it's useless. Hallelujah. See, we keep sharpening ourselves like this, like arrows in the presence of God we are sharpening ourselves because we are trusting God to attain a statue in the spirit where no power in existence can stop your fulfilling God's destiny for your life you believe that? there is a generation that is depending upon our faithfulness the Bible says he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption and he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal we are making investments in the spirit we are laboring we are traveling 
you won't be surprised when you see your life and your prophetic destiny tomorrow because you will know that yes it is god's grace but paul said it this way i am what i am by the grace of god right but he said this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all there is grace that manifests as the favor of god and there is grace that manifests as supernatural empowerment to do hallelujah the lord is changing your life i'm telling you gradually the bible says line upon line precept upon precept your value system your life the quality of your christian experience it's changing and then like the 71 day he will trust you with responsibilities he will send you and you will be shocked to see that he has built you to be his finest the finest of the finest of the best don't trivialize what god is doing in your life brothers and sisters week after week you're submitting yourself to the dealings of the spirit and it will translate into something in your life you may not look like it now see that there is no athlete who wants to look good when you are rehearsing have you seen an athlete like that you are conscious of your shoe let it not have mud. no 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 when when you are training you will see footballers get dirty and all of that but when they lift that trophy huh they can now dress and enjoy the celebration my bible tells me that no man that warreth will entangle himself with civilian affairs these trainings will prune you it will it will it will build you listen to me it will challenge you it will stretch you it will provoke you but when you submit to the dealings of the spirit the end of it is peace something will happen in your life that money cannot buy something will happen in your life that is not common you will now know that it is not common to be yielded to the spirit it's not a gift not everybody is interested there are many people who are born again but very few people are interested in the things of the spirit so god is teaching us we spend time now to pray and travel in the spirit you cannot imagine the levels of victory and so you would just step home and you see that doors begin to open and some of you your loved ones will not know they will just say aha uh -huh, things are working well now things don't just work they are enforced in the spirit learn this learn this learn this one day it will change is a waste of time time does not change things are you getting me engaging kingdom principles 38 years that man was at the pool of bethesda in less than five minutes he got up he would have remained there forever So the word of God that you are receiving, you must believe it. Please hear me. You must believe it. If you're just sitting down and watching every week and just looking and hoping that this word will make sense one day, you may be deceiving yourself. The Bible says ever learning. Have you seen people like that? They have all of the revelation but never coming to the comprehension of the truth. Depart from those kinds of people. When you come into the presence of God, give your heart. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And he gives you an assurance. What's the assurance? That thy profiting may appear. Look, let me tell you. Um, you see, if your life does not bear fruit after a particular time, you will be frustrated. Because it's God that sees the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Men do not have the ability to see the heart. So your Christian experience must translate into a testimony that glorifies the name of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it does not, your family members will never see the relevance of your commitment to prayer and to the study of the word, the disciplines and the constraints of the spirit. 
Say, my life will bear fruit. Say it, my life will bear fruit. Brothers and sisters, if you go to your house and there is a sick person and you have a revelation and you pray for that sick person, stand up my brother, and you pray for that sick person and the sick person stands up, do you know that that is a sermon that is more than one year of beckoning up? You don't need to invite people and say, come for Christ. No, 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 no. The woman, at the, Samar the Samaritan woman said, come and see a man that has told me everything I've done. What is the result in your life that compels people to want to know about God? If your life continues to remain a barren wilderness, there is no reason why people should be attracted to your God. There was something that Ruth saw and she told Naomi, he said, my, your God will be my God. Hallelujah. It's not just for you to come and watch a man of God doing great things. No. It's to provoke your spirit and you go back with that anointing. You're not falling down for nothing. Say, I'm anointed. Say it. And some of you are even laughing at yourself. Say it. It has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with being alive. Hallelujah. And you step into your house, you step into your place of work, and you step in as an ambassador, as an envoy. Don't let people mock your emoji. Emoji for nothing. Emoji, emoji. They keep calling you. When there's trouble, they pass you. You are emoji as a nickname. No. Emoji, you say yes, and they pass you, and, and you are not contributing anything to the kingdom. Elisha said, Hi, I love that guy. He said, Let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. That there is a prophet in Israel. Can the devil look at your family and say, Ah, if, if only I can shift Zuera out of the way and like a big hen, you stay there and say, You are invited. I have become a shield. He said, as for me and my house. For many of us, it's as for me and myself. It must translate beyond you. Are you getting my point? You shield others. You are minding your business and you see the devil trying to oppress somebody. You say, Satan is my business. It's my business. Whether you invite me or not, it is my business. You must let this person go. Hallelujah. Listen, it's not enough for you. Don't get used to seeing miracles, healings, deliverances. You know, in Koinonia, we're so used to miracles. When it happens, you just watch one of those things that's happened again. You see, it's a lesson. It's a handwriting upon your life. Are you hearing me? That God is challenging you and telling you that your life ought to be supernatural in every way not just by making noise and disturbing people when they are sleeping praying in tongues no it must translate he said let your light so shine before who before yourself before men you already know you have the light but they do not know he said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result praise your father in heaven when was the last time someone spoke to you about his situation and he said that's all right that's all right i come in the name of the lord jesus christ and you picked up your phone you said let's pray many of us is just hey yeah see, i just returned from koinonia it was powerful this night ah you missed and ben said, i'm i'm having a little stomach ache said, oh, it's like that let's let's just lie down it's too late the chemist is closed oh, oh. no 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 you need to get angry one day are you hearing what i'm saying as soon as you get home you hear your sister saying finally my name came out they are about to to downsize me and 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 do all of that and he said oh i'm sure that god knows how he will work things out look at what you are saying you are the ambassador you are the voice of god in that room you must die one of the things i've learned listen to me one of the things i've learned about working in the anointing is that you must die to your ego hello are you hearing what i'm saying 
many of us are so conscious what if i i tell the people god will bless you and god doesn't bless them tomorrow they will now see me and say pastor that prayer you know people are so funny pastor you prayed and the prayer didn't work oh. and you feel stupid you feel embarrassed if i do well god should take the glory if nothing happens who should take the shame I, I answer me who should take the shame so if you are taking the shame you have been hallelujah go and pray for the sick person pray let the person die in your hands no problem just pray you now go and find out what is wrong with you and then the person says there's there's one wound if i open you say ah you wouldn't have even told me look just quietly go to the hospital challenge your faith hallelujah I'm saying i'm not a man of god's wife i want peace i don't want to trouble satan let him know take away you see i believe that our mindsets are changing that mindset of i don't trouble you satan don't trouble me too let's all mind our business it does not work in this earth realm are you getting what i'm saying it does not work in the earth realm there are many of us i would not be surprised that there are some of us who sit down like that you believe that because you are not active in the things of the kingdom when the devil comes you will jump you and go and look for those who are really causing him trouble and he said the devil pass please pass i don't have anything i didn't look for any trouble it doesn't work that way satan does not disturb you because you have become a slave to him right but you must you must tear down the assaults of the devil over the lives of people say one more time i'm anointed say it i'm anointed the holy ghost just took over this meeting let's just flow with the way he's i'm anointed look at your hands everyone look at your hands i know you have been insulting it that it doesn't look nice forget about all those ones look at your hand whatever you have there is your hand whether it's rough or smooth it's irrelevant just look at your hand i'm talking about the spiritual the spiritual content i like you to say my hands represent the hands of jesus they carry the anointing of the holy spirit they can produce results and work wonders do you believe that this is god bless you this is my mentality this is my mentality my hands are not just for eating no it's, there is there is something upon my hands jesus has placed his hands upon my own hands many of us we keep falling down and rising but we are not blessing anybody i want to ask you a few questions just a few minutes and then we'll round up listen how many of us believe we are anointed we just said we're all anointed the question i have for you tonight is who has your anointing brought to the kingdom has your anointing been able to save anybody i once was lost huh come brother that this brother was lost and on the strength of the anointing that you have whether it was to save him to get him healed he has now come into the saving knowledge of the kingdom If your anointing, listen, I'll tell you why many people do not see more of the anointing in their life. They want anointing. And the first question is for what? What do you want it for? So you'll be speaking and people will fall down. If that is your definition of the anointing, if that is your scope, you know, especially the youth, we like power. And, and there's nothing wrong with it you like the fact that you just sit down and say i'm speaking some of you while i was talking and things were happening you were it was as if you were pouring cold water in your body calm down the lord is speaking to you right now calm down if there is no passion in your hearts to see his kingdom come i am telling you now you do not need the anointing and you shall receive dunamis acts chapter 1 verse 8 please project it for us and you shall receive power after that 
that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that power is to an end it says and you shall be what witnesses witnesses who is a witness who is a witness if Tosin slaps this gentleman and I saw it what do you call me a witness if we go to the court I said Tosin really slap I saw it so I'm a witness the Holy Ghost makes you a witness. You were not there when Jesus died. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? You were not there when Jesus died. Were you there? You were not there on the cross. But now you are standing to represent a message that you were not there physically. So the Holy Ghost says, at least I was, I, was, I was there. I was not in Jesus on the cross, but I was around. I saw everything. Let me partner with you. You do the talking and then I will prove that you are not a liar. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you tell the sick that Jesus has healed you. All of this rubbish sickness is over. And the Holy Ghost says, yes, I was there on the cross. By his stripes, this guy has been healed. And you stretch forth your hands. And the Holy Ghost validates that your claims are true. Everyone say, I'm a witness. But the, the challenge is that many of us are not witnesses indeed you have roommates you have people in your workplace and there's no transformation no transformation the lord is speaking to us tonight hallelujah i may not have time to talk so much about it but i i, I really wanted to talk extensively on soul winning tonight when god just took over we give him praise hallelujah we give him praise because at least he visited people and he blessed people but the question i have for us is that who is coming to the saving knowledge of jesus christ because of the investments of the spirit upon your life there are many of us who are the only ones who are born again in our family there are many of us you leave people just in and you get up and carry your bible and come for koinonia and you are happy again and again we've had people here especially students when they're in their final year some of them get to find out about koinonia it's not like they do not know but for many people the god of this world has blinded their minds they don't care are you getting my point and some of us just sit down we just watch and the devil keeps destroying these lives and then at a point where they have two or three weeks to get out of zaria then they come and you see them crying and wondering and getting angry with you and you say sorry it's okay now and then you don't do anything about it again the lord is speaking to us do you know why many ministries let me be sincere with you do you know why many ministries are small small in terms of membership and small in terms of impact look at every ministry that there is a rich investment of the ministry of the holy spirit they are committed to turning many into righteousness right and transforming lives why should i want the holy ghost in my life why should i want his anointing when i'm not interested in praying for the sick right when i'm not interested in 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 seeing people set free you see the church has reduced anointing to money hello hello and many of us are already becoming victims of this theology our concept of anointing is just power to prosper so i have the anointing meaning i have the anointing to prosper financially so you buy the car you buy the clothes you build the house you do everything and you say i'm anointed if you have ever doubt my anointing look at the fruits of my anointing car house will car go to heaven answer me will house go to heaven listen listen brothers and sisters we must begin to live having the passions of god in our heart there are many of us here we used to be committed to genuine evangelism genuine evangelism and we are allowing this this demonic wave of complacency in the church to just come around there are many churches i say this with all apology and due respect 
they cannot even remember the last time they made an altar call and they don't care correct they don't care to an extent that we can preach and look at many evangelical meetings and crusades right now on the crusade ground is money they are raising and doing miracles as great as that is the end of all of these things is to see a soul not just saved in terms of the religiosity saved but lives transformed every society is a reflection of the quality of the mindsets that are there this is why we are passionate and committed we do everything that we do week in week out to make sure that souls are saved and lives are transformed you will notice that i've almost not missed any koinonia meeting no matter where i am no matter where i am i try to make sure that friday i am back you know why because this work is my primary assignment any external ministration is just an extension of the apostolic impact are you getting what i'm saying now but this is the core and some of you are pastors let me talk to you or some of you are men of god you have your church you are in a year you will only preach once or twice and members are just sitting down and being confused under different kinds of messages and theologies everybody coming with his I believe in the corporate impute of the body but the man the one that God has put as a shepherd you must stay and build the people you are constructing an ideology and it must be sustained so that the people are built in that ideology so that they won't be tossed through and through by every junk and every wind of doctrine there are some things when some of you here now you won't even pray about it is that true on account of what you have known The word of God comes to build you but when it builds you it creates a sense of responsibility you can't just be falling for nothing and then you stand up and you just clean your body and when you are going you say Kai! I fell today again oh. I've been falling the last three weeks this person said me too oh. this thing I don't know how it works that's not the goal it's not a thing to just it's, it's, it's for you how many of you here have, have sat down to say look Bring 5,000, bring 5,000. Let's make a very serious tract. Tract that is well edited and, and has the kingdom, not religion. Say, I don't have a ministry. You don't need a ministry. You need passion. You see, that's the mindset we all have. Huh? We believe that for impact to ever happen, you must have a ministry. So three friends come together. They bring the 5,000 5, and say, come, let's settle this. Thing. Who is the Jew of this group? Who is the real Jew? If they sow a seed now, who does it go to? That is to be carnally minded. The Bible says is dead. That's that's really what carnality is. That you are already that. See, Judas was not a bad person. Judas was a carnal person. He looked at Jesus, and he had a business idea. The name of his business idea was Jesus. How he can use Jesus Christ and make money. That was all that was why he didn't even use the money he thought that when they come to catch jesus christ he would do his majestic thing again when he found out that that thing had backfired he died he killed himself how many of us here we are on facebook some of us some of us are on twitter some of us are and we well not 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 many i say this for the sake of those who will be listening to the message there are many of us it's just rubbish if you are happy today everybody will know on facebook that you are happy joyful the sun is shining tomorrow if you are angry this world what a dark place your whole your whole emotional life on display idleness we don't live with the consciousness of the kingdom as you are laughing please take seriously what i'm saying hallelujah Yet we want to see the glory of God in our lives. What is wrong with using your posts and say, Lord, I may not be a man of God. I may not have the power to heal the sick now, but I commit myself. Is that true? To making sure that every week one soul is saved. I must come for koinonia with somebody. Sister, how has your beautiful face translated into soul winning in the kingdom? Let me talk to ladies. 
your beauty is either bringing people into the kingdom or taking people out of the kingdom is that true there's nothing as neutral so the brother sees you and says sister you are very fine say we give glory to the, the name of the lord i'm inviting you let me use this opportunity and invite you if you are afraid of talking to the person about jesus christ some of us once they just say you are beautiful they just say ah let me not bring jesus into it as if jesus is putting sugar inside food you know it's as if let me let me savor this moment now it doesn't come every day let me enjoy it jesus stay away let me not bring any religiosity and then the lord watches you from the throne and says you pray you want a ministry you want a ministry where you are everywhere you want an international ministry and god sees your heart and he knows that there are some levels of the anointing if we give this person you are going to be a disaster to the kingdom and he measured a thousand cubits that man was there until he proved that he was faithful then another thousand cubits was measured there are some of us even if you fast for 100 days i am telling you more anointing will not come until you step up your passion and your and your reckless abandon for the things of the kingdom we're afraid of being looked at as being fanatical right so many of us i'm not a man of god please please i can i can so see it you know there's this theology people teach there are those who give there are those who preach many people say i'm in the category of the givers no everybody's in all three categories you must give you must pray you must preach hallelujah don't just say me i'm a giver and then because the man of god really needs money desperately he say you are doing the same thing with me you who is giving me and preaching is all the same thing it's true that it's the same thing but if it's the same thing it means you can switch it's still the same thing preach to who has changed because of you how many of us does your presence judge sin and iniquity listen to what i'm saying does your presence i'm not talking of condemnation right I'm not talking of condemning people and just writing people off that's 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 something else that's a theology that came from hell but does your presence judge sin and iniquity truly that someone wants to do something bad and your presence is an inconvenience to the person for some of us your presence is a is a catalyst bless your head thank god you have even come sir and then let me not even let me not just bypass this how many of us have truly made up our minds to part with iniquity listen listen please do not ever think that there is a way of negotiating your way into intimacy with god if you really want authentic power iniquity must be far from you when i talk of iniquity you you know what i'm talking about it must be far don't say it does not matter don't say it does not matter i'm repeating it you must hear me don't say it does not matter you will never walk in authentic power that's why a lot of people cast out demons the demons cast them too because they know that jesus said satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself we joke around with the issue of sin and iniquity in the body of Christ. And then we believe that because God is gracious, right? Iniquity is what will give Satan access to your life, your state of heart. Iniquity is not just sleeping around or drinking and smoking. They are fruits of that iniquity. Iniquity is a state of heart that is perpetually rebellious towards god and the laws of the kingdom the psalmist said if i cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not have heard me who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart when there are still christians giving bribe and taking bribe you will never see the hand of the lord don't say it does not matter you want job somebody saying bring two hundred and fifty thousand and you are happy say it's like that it's nigeria please don't bring any church thing here 
bring it to oh, bring it because you are the don't try to dichotomize your life and say this is my social life this is my spiritual life what is the meaning of that nonsense in one of the revelations the four living creatures were in one body huh four dimensions functioning in one body we must be far from iniquity it has been the ancient key to the presence and the power of god and by the grace of god almighty we will not water it down in koinonia we will preach the full gospel i will tell you the truth the secrets that bring the glory and the presence of god there are many of us we watch all kinds of nonsense we think it does not matter look at look at the way your mind is huh? you can't look at a beautiful lady and just go free as soon as they are sharing the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ you feel like starting another service for yourself because you have you have polluted your mind watching all kinds of nonsense it's a culture it's a sacrifice am i blessing you tonight oh yes it's a sacrifice there are many of us ladies anybody you can even be walking on the road somebody will just park and say enter you say really let me enter first and find what sort of don't you live by values everybody say values say it shout it values as a kingdom citizen never forget this we live by values you may see us jump around but let me tell you the love of god constrains us hallelujah sister let people be able to look at your life and say how can a beautiful lady like this not be loose and he said no i may be beautiful but i have so i've given myself like a love slave to god that i'm beautiful you know many brothers see our beautiful ladies you know koinonia has pretty ladies right brothers say amen, amen. they are your wives too so say amen. amen but listen to me now the issue here is that before the transition between now and when they become your wives you must mind yourself and discipline yourself and be a genuine christian hallelujah brothers let me give you a little secret if you don't mind yourself with respect to ladies i'm not talking of sleeping around ladies men that are over conscious about ladies never encounter the presence of god powerfully i'm not talking of sleeping around you are just thinking it's, it's still it's still the same thing you are you are stopping your mind from entering certain dimensions of the secret place i'm not saying frown at any lady after corner saying mm, i'm pressing it to god no that's not what i'm saying there are many of us our own encumbrances is what i call carnality what you wear you can be thinking of what to wear for koinonia from saturday which one will i wear let me add it's, it's good we believe in excellence but be careful lest it corrupts your time we believe in excellence but let me tell you it's better to wear bathroom slippers and come and focus and flog it out with destiny and change your life who cares whether you wear your visage or gucci thank god but demons can bypass that visage and oppress your life and that's what we are trying to tackle in this place are you getting what i'm saying when you take care of your spiritual life then you can beautify your body on the other hand let me balance it on the other hand there are some of us that are careless about our our bodies we, we do not know that is still part of spirituality right what you wore yesterday you just look at it smell it not very smelly you just carry it and you're on your way to koinonia no. be intentional about your coming here don't make it look like it's a mistake be intentional plan these are all aspects of the kingdom let everything about your life neatness neatness thoroughness some of us are very dirty the way you are sitting down looking at me like this your rooms there are still plates that all these things are i'm just showing you how that your life must draw people it will either draw people towards god or away from him and don't you say it does not matter the bible says add to your faith virtue the word virtue there is moral excellence say i'm changing
especially if you really are say it i'm changing because some of you as god is speaking to you go back to your rooms and wash that plate this night wash it this night hallelujah if come sweetheart if i'm going to get married to this lady i'm taking my revelation of god together with all the unrenewed liabilities that i have i'm coming to say bring your own and and let's 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 wed in holy matrimony the question is are you going to be a blessing to your partner or the person will look at you and say had i known what deceived me what didn't i see huh say i'm a blessing the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed bless you you must be a soul winner from today whatever you will do to bring souls to the kingdom i say whatever in the positive way right don't go and do all kinds of babylonian things and say whatever let souls be one no in the kingdom the means is as important as the end i've taught you right because if if you say i am doing this and that so that souls will come i i allowed the man to go for weekend with me because i'm trying to win him between now and the next one month he must be born again no no that's not that's not the kind of born again we're talking about praise the lord say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i become serious with my spiritual life in the name of jesus i lay aside every weight and everything that corrupts my christian testimony two more things i'll talk about and then we'll pray and we'll be done hallelujah i want to talk about two things i have seen across that stops many souls from coming to the kingdom number one is anger among believers write it I don't know where this impartation of the spirit of anger flew and came from there are many of your anger is not demons the demons left since february miracle service but the anger is still there anger rage it is an aspect of your christian life you must blot out you must blot out please write it anger You can be as calm as a dove but when you get angry you can give it to anybody there are some sisters right here in this place you would have been married since if only you address this issue if you like go to prophet apostle pastor teacher you must change that thing. there are some brothers here you don't have friends you say i don't care i'm in a world all by myself you have beat everybody close to you because of anger your younger ones run away from you there's nothing about your life that is pleasing because of anger there are many pastors today the anger and the rage they have they can finish preaching even on stage they can almost slap the other person i said sing ten or what, what are you singing and you are wondering and then the guy turns and says, let's pray and he's looking i say yes, I don't. <laughs> Number two, immorality. Immorality. Let's bury this thing this night. Look at me. Look at me. Do not let anyone, please, 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 koinonia. My conscience must be clear before God and I must tell you. Do not let anyone convince you, convince you that a life of immorality you can be able to patch your christian experience and patch immorality i'm saying it now you must hear me in jesus name i'm i'm telling you this from the depths of my heart there are many of you as i'm talking even the holy spirit is saying thank you jesus finally i'm getting to i'm not condemning you <laughs> I tell you the number of believers sir the number of believers that are compromising on their christian integrity 
especially over the issue of immorality this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many souls do not come to the kingdom if you are involved in all those things i love you but you must stop this night in jesus name say amen whether you are part of it or not say amen immorality is not just sleeping around hold on so that you don't just say thank god me i don't sleep around even god knows hold on pornography pornography right now we have our blackberries it's amazing you check christian phones and see the kinds of things there i'll talk about it pornography all kinds of other devilish things and don't just blame the devil the day your roommate sees you and says ah what is this with naked men? Say it's Satan. I'm, I'm even waiting for the end of the month. No, don't mock God. Don't mock God. Don't make it look like you come for miracle service and say, "Lord, I'm open," and then you receive that one. There are many of us who are great men and women of God, but this is the setback in our lives, right? Look, listen to me. This is this is Bethel, the place of bread. Huh? What I'm doing to you now is like a, jo a doctor giving a patient injection. You feel the pain, but that chloroquine must enter so that you will be healed. Immorality. Sisters, mm -hmm. let me talk to you. You must create rules in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have not been doing it, create rules. If you are in a relationship, talk about it. You are in a relationship with, with a lady. Part of the reasons why you are in a relationship with her is because you are physically attracted to her sit down and be saying i'm a man of god and you'll be very surprised warn yourself tell yourself myself behave receive grace from god create boundaries huh i will i will tell you this don't think oh this is the law mm -hmm. man if this law is going to keep you focused and useful so be it so be it hallelujah there are many of us study yourself sister you know you are very vulnerable huh don't go as and say i know he's just a pastor it's been long since i washed his plate was the plate not washed was it not washed thank god for your generosity but you must be careful anything you cannot do in the open is questionable are you getting what i'm saying and many of us who are pastors here you are the we are the ones that are subject to the greatest attack hear me hear me man of god you accepted the call and you are careless with your life you will be very surprised if there is the call of god upon your life guard your anointing or you see the way men embarrass themselves you can fake healing deliverance is what will really show you whether you are all of that you'll be casting and the demons are just laughing and saying all okay. kinds it should never be so we are going to pray because i know that there are people affected in these areas are you getting my point and trust me if you think you need help please see me for counseling i am more than more than willing to help you we are a family don't say i'm a man of god i'm struggling with masturbation or struggling with immorality and i think is 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 an issue there's nothing to be ashamed of are you hearing what i'm saying there is nothing to be ashamed of because you see spiritual things cannot be hidden for too long they will find expression immorality is something we must work i know god is helping us we are young people right the tv the media all kinds of things the the challenge on the average young man right now is is maybe 100 times more than it used to be 40 50 years ago I understand that but it's still not an excuse and please don't let anybody fool you that everybody is doing it huh there are many of us that will tell you who is not doing it no mm -mm. there are people who truly truly have taken advantage of the grace of god and they love god sincerely may you be one of such in the name of jesus christ may you be one of such in the name of jesus christ make up your mind and if you think you cannot hold yourself start finding a wife quick quick 
no 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 i'm very serious i'm not playing games the bible says it it is bibles i'm not saying you marry because mm -mm, but the bible says if peradventure in your quest to love god and you find out that you have prayed you have fasted you know that this one is not demons again please marry i'm telling you this marry it is a biblical i say it doesn't change anything are you joking are you married to know whether it changes something or not just marry obey the bible don't start arguing with scriptures anger immorality immorality you have a you have pastor friends or groups sit together and talk about this talk about this in love don't condemn people and you when somebody comes to meet you and say see I find myself sleeping around. You say, I knew it. The way I've been looking at you, I know you are not straight. No, no, no. That ministry is not given to you because that's the issue. That's, listen, listen, we're rounding up. That's the reason why many people are unable to open up because they are afraid. They don't trust us men of God. They don't trust. Somebody comes and opens up and tells you, this is the challenge in my life. This is what I'm going through. They'll say, ah, have you had forget everybody you see preaching on stage oh, people are dying in silence the other person say what are you talking about I say I will just you something happened no as a minister you are a steward don't betray people's trust on you are, are you hearing what I'm saying but please I'm talking to you this is an admonishment from the depths of my heart you feel that there are issues compromising your Christian experience and you need help by the grace of God God has anointed us to be able to offer you help. And with Jesus' joy and with every open heart, it's a privilege. But don't sit down and die. You can fake it before men. But you see, you are, it's, it's a seed you are sowing. It's a seed you are sowing. We are going to pray. Just two prayer points. Rise up on your feet. And we'll be done for tonight. Today's service was another dimension by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. While we are taking the first prayer point, at the same time, an altar call is going to be made. Please, everyone listen. This is a serious altar call. There are many of us tonight who are saying, Lord, please take my whole life. I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm tired of living life my own way. You may have even given your life to Christ before, but you know that you are not serious with God and you want to step up your Christian experience. God has shown you that he wants to use you. He's shown you that he wants to do mighty things. But you are saying, Lord, I've, I've not truly surrendered everything. The moment we start praying, I'd like you to just come and go on your knees here. I would like to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Young, old, whatever, please. You need to truly make up your heart and your mind to the Lord hallelujah the moment we start praying please i'd like you to come up we're out of time prayer point number one prayer point number one you're going to say lord put a passion for souls put a genuine passion for souls in my life that beginning from tonight i will begin to be serious about winning souls and making sure that people are established in the faith lift your voice and pray while they are doing that all those who need to come out find your way to the front god bless you God bless you. God bless you as you're coming. The remaining, the rest of us, please keep praying. God bless you. All of you who are coming, just come and kneel down here before God. There are still people sitting down. The Lord is speaking to you. If you need to be out, don't wait for anybody. Find your way and come. While the rest of us pray. Take it seriously tonight. This is the beginning. Those of us who need to come out. This is the beginning of your journey. Your spiritual journey to relevance. Your spiritual journey. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is home for you. Find your way. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. If the Holy Ghost is telling you you need to be here, then you need to be here. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. 
those of you in front, open up yourself to the Lord from the depths of your heart. I surrender. I surrender. Sing one more time. I surrender all. I'm not the person I used to be. I am a brand new person. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Listen, all of you. You are not the brother or the sister that just came and knelt down here. You are walking up totally free. I don't care what it is you have done. I don't care what has been the testimony. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all the th all things new. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I declare by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that you use these ones. May they be powerful men and women from today transform their lives. I break the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus, I break the power that causes you to rebel against the ways of God. I declare that from today you will have passion for the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like you to celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. Rise up. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll have your information on Tuesday. Um, you pray with the prayer department so that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. For those of you who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they will administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Our time is up. We can't take um, another prayer request. Well, that's okay for today. Um, before I invite those of us who are worshipping with us for the first time let me just take a few announcements now I want to announce something please next week Friday the Lord put this in my heart next week Friday I like us as a family of faith and all those who are connected to this ministry all across the nations all across this nation please I like us to fast hallelujah we are going to fast and your fasting starts from 6 p.m. on Thursday. Hallelujah. Not 6 a.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. That's Friday night. You won't eat anything. We're going to be praying. There are certain things that God wants to birth and bring. Hallelujah. So we're fasting from Thursday, 6, 6, what? 6 p.m. Right? And we'll run it as a marathon until... Um, if I said Friday 6 p.m., we will not eat before coming. So we'll break by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is okay. So that you can eat before coming. Please, listen. It's a dry fast, complete dry. There's no sipping water or honey. There's none of those things. Please. I, listen, listen. Those are, are, are children here. For the sake of the children, um, you may they, they can just start their fast from 6 in the morning to maybe 12. But if they feel they can go the extra mile, no problem. If you're sick and you're on medication, you can choose whether to join us or not. But please, everyone, Thursday from 6 p.m. It's not just to fast and sleep. By the grace of God, from Friday morning, this, this place will be open. Prayer department from Friday, if you can pay the price, will allow this place, while the setup is going on, you can stay around, pray around, just pray and prepare. By 3 o'clock, you go and eat well and come. You won't die. Please, don't frown at me like that. You won't die. This, listen, this, something will happen to your spirit. Some of you have done it. You've done more than that. But just run it that marathon. So whatever you have to do, just know that once it is 6 o'clock, even if you have not eaten the whole day, once it's 6 o'clock, know that the vehicle has started moving. Praise God. It's moving down till that time. All, all escorts, all escorts 
you are stretching till six. All escorts were not stopping by three. You are stretching till six. All your food, you can come and eat it here, come and die here. But still six, please. So the whole is not 12 hours now, it's 24 hours. And there is, I know that there is capacity that we need to build in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kata Branda Kata Bakotos Koto Breka Teka Nekata The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline